Good evening. It is Tuesday, May 19th. I am coming to you from the State Emergency Operations Center, and I am joined by Captain Sweeney, who is the head of the State Emergency Operations Center. Today, the Edenville and Sanford dams in Midland County breached. Residents in the area have been instructed to evacuate immediately. Residents in Edenville and Sanford have been ordered to move out by local law enforcement. And if you are in those areas, you must evacuate as soon as possible. Please get somewhere safe now. The city of Midland, uh, both the south and west sides have been evacuated as have uh, the village of Sanford and Dow Chemical. We are also in the process of trying to evacuate uh, Titabawasi Township, Thomas Township, and Saginaw Township. This is serious and it is time for people to take action to keep themselves safe and to evacuate. We still need thousands of people to take this action. If you have a relative or a friend somewhere else in the state that you can go and stay with, please go to their homes. If you don't, go to one of the many shelters that have been set up in and around Midland County. Shelters remain open until further notice at Midland High School on East Lawn, uh, 1301 East Lawn, Midland, I'm sorry, Meridian Junior High School at 3475 North Meridian Road, Bullock Creek High School at 1420 South Badger, and West Midland Family Center at 4011 West Isabella. Please do not hesitate. Go stay with a friend or relative or get to one of these shelters now. Follow the direction of public safety officials on the ground. In the next 12 to 15 hours, downtown Midland could be under approximately nine feet of water. We are anticipating an historic high water level. Tonight, I issued an emergency declaration to ensure that state and local officials have the resources that they need in order to respond to this extreme flooding. The State Emergency Operations Center is fully activated and engaged in responding to this emergency. State officials from many different apartments across state government have been on site throughout the day. The National Guard has been activated and is on site as well, with high water vehicles on their way to the area. The 125 infantry have been called to the scene 100 soldiers are ready and doing inspections. We've uh, retained a helicopter so that we can ascertain egress routes. The 51st Civil Support Team, a special unit out of Fort Custer, have been requested to support Dow Chemical. And the Red Cross is activated and moving into the area. Mid-Michigan Medical Center is working on moving up to 150 patients. And the Michigan State Police has both marine, well, has all three marine, air, and land uh, vehicles uh, at work to help evacuate. I will continue to monitor the situation closely. We will work lockstep with General Paul Rogers and the National Guard, Colonel Joe Gasper and the Michigan State Police, the DNR, the Department of Eagle, we will all be working in concert to protect Midland County families. And we'll be working with Jen Boyer and the leaders on the ground at the local operations center. I've been in touch with many local leaders in Midland and we will stay in close contact as the situation progresses. I wanna say again, if you are in one of these impacted areas, please, right now, evacuate. This is going to be hard and we are anticipating several feet of water in the area. To go through this in the midst of a global pandemic is almost unthinkable, but we are here and to the best of our ability, we are gonna navigate this together. So please, to the best of your ability, continue to wear a face covering when you go to a shelter or go stay with a friend or relative. Please 
Try to protect yourself if you are able. And please make your best efforts to observe social distancing. I know if you're at a shelter, it's going to be very hard. But let's try to continue to protect ourselves in this moment on top of all the other stress that we're going through. We will get through this, and we will take care of one another. If you know someone who lives in the area I have described, please reach out to them. Check in on your loved ones to make sure that they are safe. And if they need help, make sure you get in contact with Midland 911. We need everyone in the area to get somewhere safe. If you've just tuned in and you're looking for a place to go, I want to say again that shelters remain open. Midland High School, Meridian Junior High School, Bullock Creek High School, and West Midland Family Center are open as shelters. If you're looking for more information, visit midland911.org. A number of street closures remain in effect throughout Midland County and the City of Midland. So please visit www.midland911.org or www.cityofmidlandmi.gov for a full list of street closures. Residents are advised to obey all road closure signs so that you can stay clear of standing water, flooding areas, and floating debris. There are a number of dangers, so please make sure that you are connected and dealing, getting real-time information. Do not, please, do not attempt to walk through or drive through standing water. It can be dangerous. And residents should take extra precaution where electrical items may be submerged. Stay updated and please get somewhere safe. My team and I will continue to work through the night to protect Midland County families. This is unlike anything we've ever seen before. I feel like I've said that a lot over the last number of weeks, but this truly is a historic event that is playing out in the midst of another historic event. And so we need to make sure that we keep our wits about us and work on this together. We're gonna need everyone to chip in and to help one another. Reach out to your neighbors and make sure they're okay. Make sure they have a place to stay. I want to end by thanking the people that are risking their lives on the front lines, our first responders, emergency response officials, the Michigan State Police, the Michigan National Guard, all of the first responders at the local level, everyone who's helping out. Thank you for helping us get through this. Please stay informed, stay safe, and take care of one another. With that, I'm happy to open it up for a few questions. Thank you, Governor. Uh, you mentioned this already. We're obviously dealing with another emergency and the pandemic as we deal with this flooding. Is the state prepared financially, personnel-wise, to handle this right now? How are you dealing with divvying up all of our resources? Well, this crisis demands that we take action and that we can't stop to um, you know, make every estimate of what the investment is going to be. We're going to do the right thing in the midst of a crisis, and we're going to help people get out. Um, there's no doubt that all of the stressors that we are under come with a cost. We will work through what that is, but right now we are in the midst of trying to save as many lives as we can and get people out. And so that's what we're going to stay focused on. But there's no doubt we will have a follow-up conversation on this front, I'm sure. Looking at the people in, in the middle of this right now, underwater, their homes, their vehicles, we know that flood insurance is not typically covered as in normal homeowners insurance. Is the state prepared to take any action on that? How can these people financially recover from something like this? So when we have disasters like this, we will um, declare the state of, of emergency and we will take action to help people in the moment and then we will start to plan to ensure that we've got some supports for people that are navigating this. The depth and um, of the destruction is unknown yet, but we will, I mean, I think it's safe to anticipate that there are going to be a lot of people who are going to struggle as a result of this on top of all of the other stressors that we have right now. And so we're going to work incredibly hard to help people uh, get through this. And, and we'll work with the legislature uh, to do everything we can to, to help. 
Have you had any conversations yet? I know it's early. Um, this is happening as we as we talk about this right now. But have you had any conversations with the legislative leaders or congressional members as far as working with FEMA to get some federal assistance right now? Yeah, so we had a call earlier with stakeholders from a number of different levels, including congressional and uh, at the state level, as well as the local leaders. Um, it's going to be important that we are aligned as we make requests for additional resources. We're going to need to make that request. Um, I think something worth noting is that right now the water is rising, and we don't know, won't know the extent of it and for maybe the next 12, 15 hours. Um, I don't want anyone to go to bed tonight not knowing how serious the situation is and that it's time to make sure that they evacuate right now. And so I just wanted to reiterate that we will be working on requests with FEMA to get the assistance, additional assistance that we're going to need. But right now we are going to do everything we can to help people get out of what is a currently uh, a dangerous situation. Okay. You mentioned the National Guard. They're um, helping with this situation. Can you expand a little bit more about their role and are they there right now helping people ev evacuate? The Guard is on site and they have mobilized a number of additional um, soldiers. We have been also bringing in different um, uh, capabilities that the, are unique to the Guard. They've got training for crises like this, so we're grateful that we've got so many well-trained uh, Guards people that can descend on, on the city of Midland. I know that also our state police have been on the ground, um, as have DNR and Eagle. Uh, we've got a lot of different people from various agencies there to make sure that we are coordinated with the local leadership and that we are um, absolutely doing everything we can to help people right now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Stay safe.